Hi everyone. I created a little tutorial on how to best use line guides on your Pazzle Inspiration Studio. The line guides are a pretty neat feature that allow you to draw lines on your virtual mat here so you can get a rough idea of where you can place elements and this is important when you want to save paper. To first start off I'd like to explain a little bit about the x-axis and the y-axis. Now you don't need to be a great mathematician to understand this. The x-axis is this line right here the far left line of your virtual mat. The y-axis, the letter Y, is this bottom line right here. So again, that's just a simple little introduction that hopefully will make sense as we go along. To access your line guide, I know of two ways. One way is to go up here to setting and then click line guides and you'll get the uh, little pop-up window on how to set the guidelines or line guides cancel all that for a minute. Another way is to simply right click on your mat and scroll down till you get to line guide and you'll see a familiar pop-up window. Once you get here you want to set your line guides. So let me get out of that for a moment. For this example I'm going to pretend that on my mat I have a 5 by 7 sheet of cardstock that I'm going to put in this upper corner and then another 5 by 7 piece of cardstock that I'm going to put down here. So, since I put the 5 by 7 cardstock up here, and each notch here is 1 inch, I know that the length of the cardstock is 7 inches. So, when I go to my line guides here, and from the X axis, from the X, I want to type in a 7. I click the plus, which basically means put this on the mat. And you can see here, behind this screen here, the uh, line guide for the x-axis is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 inches away from the start of the mat. That covers the length of the paper. Now the width of the paper is 5 inches. Now don't be so hasty to type in a 5 here, because remember, this is from the y-axis. So this would be from this bottom axis. So we want to go up to where the bottom line is 5, which is right here. So to do that, since my mat is 12 inches, I just subtract 5 from 12 and I get 7. So, Or you could look at this way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The line will be here. So from the y axis, I will also put a 7. Oops, let's see here back to line guides. I'm sorry. Put 7 and then hit the uh, plus sign. And there you go. If I hit OK, you can see this is the Y. Here is the X. And this section will be where my 5 by 7 cardstock is. Now, if I put another cardstock on the mat, and maybe I'll start it right here and go down to 5 inches, I, I want to put a line here to show where the top edge of this cardstock is. So from the y axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I go to line guides, and from the y, type in a 6, and yes, it's okay to have more than one here, and you'll see another, let me move this out of the way, you'll see another line here. Now that covers the top edge, so again, you'll have to sort of visualize that here I'm putting a 5 by 7 piece of cardstock. And down here, I'm going to be putting another 5x7. Here's the top edge of my second piece of cardstock. And I'm going to go down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to this line. This is exactly 1 inch up from my Y axis. So I type in a 1, hit the plus sign to add it, and then you'll see they added the line here. Click OK, and this section Whatever I put in here, the mat will be cut in my 5x7 cardstock, and what I put here will be cut on my second piece of 5x7 cardstock. This is all empty space here. There will be no paper here, as is this. This is all empty space. A as of now, I don't know of a way to get rid of these lines here, but 
um, that's not really important right now. And this is also empty space. When you create the line guides, you'll notice that when I put the cursor over these lines, it turns into two arrows. When I click on it, I can then move my line guide and then release it. So now I have, well, let me refresh to get rid of that line. Now I have a three by seven piece of cardstock up here. I could also move this one, of course, like this. And I have a three by six. You can move the line guides anywhere you like. Now, if I want to go back, I simply right click to line guides. And here are those ugly numbers that I changed. So I'm going to turn this back into a seven. Oops, sorry. Seven. Get rid of this one right here. By getting rid of one, I just simply click on it and click this. That's a little minus sign. And that will get rid of that. And then from the x axis, I click seven and add. I want to get rid of the six, so click the minus sign. And we're back to where we are. So that's just a brief tutorial. Uh, well, it's over six minutes, but hopefully it's brief, on the introduction of line guides. I'm sure there's a lot more you can do with line guides. For example, if I right-click on a line and click line guides, and I can click change the color to orange if I like. And let's see what that does. And here you can see the orange. If I click refresh, this set of line guides is orange. And that could be helpful for um, if you want to just distinguish one set of line guides from the other. But that's it, folks. That's a brief introduction to line guides. Uh, I really like this feature because, it, as I said, it allows me to save paper. And I know that whatever I create in here will cut on the paper. So I don't accidentally go over here and let my element go over here because then I know it will not cut because that's where my paper is. So it's sort of like a, a virtual paper I'm creating. Hopefully this was helpful to you, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to uh, contact me. Have a great day.